What's going on everyone, my name is Suboptimal and I'm just a typical Indian guy who makes videos about web development and productivity. In this video, I go over how to set up Code Mirror in a Vue CLI app. For those that don't know, Code Mirror is just a text editor that you can use inside of the browser. So let me just show you guys a couple examples. So here is JS Fiddle and in JS Fiddle, they're using three separate Code Mirrors, one for HTML, one for JavaScript, one for CSS. Another company that uses Code Mirror is actually Chrome and Firefox. So if you ever open up the sources section inside of your dev tools, then you'll notice that this is running on Code Mirror. Another company that uses Code Mirror is Algo Expert, which is a platform that allows you to just practice lead code style questions for interviews. And another company that uses uh, Code Mirror is Obsidian, which is a uh, very popular uh, markdown app that's been on the come up lately. Basically, what I'm trying to say is Code Mirror is powering a lot of cool technologies that people use on a daily basis. So it'd be really cool to understand how it works. So today, I'm going to get you guys started with Code Code mirror inside of Vue.js and we're going to build this sample app here where you got a code mirror editor with the line numbers and you can toggle between different modes and before we get started I'm just gonna ask for one small favor from you guys and that is to leave a like for the YouTube algorithm it takes me quite a bit of time to plan and edit these videos so a small like just goes a long way in helping me and the channel out awesome with that out of the way let's get started so the first thing we want to do is just create and set up our Vue CLI project. So you can run that by saying Vue create and then specifying a project name here. I'm just going to call it a uh, code mirror example. And again, Vue is going to ask you to uh, select some features for the project. And I'm just going to select the default ones, Vue 3, error prevention only with ESLint etc etc you know you can pick whichever settings you're most comfortable with so i'll see you guys once this is done installing Vue just finished creating the project so let's just cd into code mirror example and then let's run the npm run serve command which is just going to display the project for us and i can go to localhost 8080 refresh the page and we should see our basic view app now let's actually get started with code mirror and we can do that pretty simply by just running npm install code mirror. So now that we've installed code mirror, the next thing to do is to import it into our project. So we can do that simply by running import star as code mirror from code mirror. And another thing we have to do is import the styles for code mirror. And we can import the styles pretty simply by going to code mirror lib code mirror dot css we imported it and we now we want to display it on our template and let me just remove these two things because they're pretty much irrelevant for the project now so let me save that and to display code mirror on our screen we first have to create a text area because code mirror binds itself to a text area on the template and what we can do is pass in a v model and this v model is just going to uh, track uh, data inside of our script tag so the data we want to track is content and let's also uh, pass in an id because you're going to see shortly how we use the id so right now we got a text area and let's just um, create that data bind so i'm going to create that content tag and for now let's just say let a equals zero so if we save this right without code mirror let's just see what it looks like so you guys can see the power of code mirror once we uh, hook it up to our project so right now if I refresh the page oh it's uh, I should just hide these imports for now you can see we got our text area but it looks really weird it looks really bland if you ask me and so that's where code mirror comes in is it allows you to convert this text area into something that looks a lot more like this so let's bind code mirror to that text area 
So I'm going to import these two again. And right now, what we're going to say is when we mount, so when everything in the template has been mounted, we want to bind the uh, code mirror to this text area. So we can run code mirror dot, I think it's from text area. And we want to get the text area. So we're going to do that by using the ID that we specified here. So we can say document dot get element by ID and pass in editor. And afterwards, it's going to take in a few parameters. So you could leave it empty, but I'm just going to add a simple one right here called line numbers, which, you know, is pretty self explanatory. And if we refresh the page, you'll see here that we got line numbers, and we got our uh, code mirror to display the code. But right now it looks really weird. Um, and why is this thing centered? The thing is, when we created our view CLI app, it added a bunch of default uh, alignment stuff into our project. So let's just remove those things. And let's remove this as well. And so now, you know, you got a uh, thing that looks a lot more reasonable, you got a code editor inside of the browser. So now what we want to do is be able to customize this code editor, so that it looks a lot better. Now let's take a look at how we can style this and make it look a little bit nicer. First, let's add a theme. Let's add the Dracula theme to this code mirror. How are we going to do that? So all we got to do is import the theme from the code mirror node modules library. And there's a ton of themes you can actually uh, look into here. And the easiest way to look at what themes are available is to go to the code mirror directory inside of your project, which is right over here. And then go to the theme section and just, you know, look at all of these CSS files, you got all these themes available for you. But the one that I want to use right now is just going to be Dracula.css. So we save that. But now we got to tell code mirror to use this Dracula theme. So when we are configuring our code mirror, and say that uh, theme is equal to Dracula. And so if we save that, we should get our code mirror to look like the Dracula theme. There you have it, we have our code mirror, and it looks like the Dracula theme. So now let's see how we can uh, style this code, right? This is basically JavaScript code, but it looks kind of plain. So how can we add some sort of syntax highlighting to get this to work? Well, it's pretty straightforward. Again, code mirror makes it really easy to do this. First, what we're going to do is import the JavaScript theme mode. Sorry, I meant to say mode, go to the mode section and then import JavaScript js I think all we do is pass in the mode. Here we can write in JavaScript. And if we save that, basically code mirror is going to handle everything for us. And there you have it. So if I start typing more JavaScript, right const h equals 10, let s equals hello, you know, you could do a ton of JavaScript. Now, obviously, you won't be able to run this JavaScript, because this is just a display, right? It's just displaying the code for you. Now we can also import the markdown theme, right? So let me import markdown. And this time it's going to be called G F M, I think. Hold on, what's going on here? GF Yeah, so GFM basically stands for um, GitHub font markdown, GitHub flavored markdown or something like that. GFM. And now we're going to be converting uh, this thing into markdown. And as you guys see right here, right, uh, this is markdown. And if I do maybe like an italic, right, it's going to display it in an italic, I can also make it a header, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So now we have markdown imported, we have JavaScript imported, the last thing we want to do is to be able to toggle between the two inside of our project. First, let's create a button inside of our project called toggle that we can click. And when we click that button, we can toggle between the separate modes. So I'm going to go into the template section here and create a button. And on click, so at click, I'm going to toggle between the two modes. So I'm going to say toggle um, code mirror mode. 
and inside of this button let's just call it uh, toggle so let me just show you guys what this looks like right you know you can click this button right now nothing's happening so let's actually add the functionality to switch between them I'm gonna go to the view script tag and add a method One second. and inside of here this is the important thing and what this code is doing is first it's getting the uh, mode of the code uh, mirror if that mode is JavaScript it's gonna set the mode to github flavored markdown otherwise it's going to set the mode to javascript right now we are mounting the code mirror into our project but there's no way to reference it uh reference code mirror outside of this scope so let's just say this dot cm equals code mirror so we do this and then we say this dot cm dot get option of the mode and so yeah um, this is a pretty straightforward way to change the option between uh, GitHub Flavor Markdown and JavaScript. So let me just save this. It looks like I made a mistake. I think it's supposed to be methods here instead of method. So if I save this now, it should work. Let me refresh the page. And as you can see, I can toggle between Markdown mode and JavaScript. So if I just write some more code uh, right here, let me just go to youtube.com youtube.com because we're in javascript mode it can't really tell that this is supposed to be a link but if we toggle it yep there you go you get that markdown uh, underline so yeah that's gonna be it for today's video hopefully you guys learned a thing or two about code mirror and how to configure it what it is how it works which companies use it things like that now obviously i didn't go fully in depth into code mirror you can do a lot of really cool stuff you can even configure things like vim or emacs key bindings into the code mirror so you can like go up and down with jk things like that so definitely you know read the documentation if you want to take this a step further and that being said if you guys enjoyed the video then hit the like button and consider subscribing for um, more suboptimal content just like this thanks for watching and i'll catch you guys next time